It's only you, Jesus. Oh, we don't want to look to another thing to satisfy. Only you are the giver of life. Only you. Only you. We sing
verse 1, it says, Nevertheless, the gloom, uh, the gloom of the distressed land will not be like that of the former times. For it says that, verse 2, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And as you read further down, it says that a son was given to us, and his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. And I just believe today that there's something very personal that God wants to do in your hearts, you valley. The, the, this, this bridge is just so powerful. It says, our hearts are in his sight. And for anybody who's ever felt overlooked, who, ever, who hasn't felt tended to, who hasn't felt cared for, the Father sees your heart. And he is our everlasting Father. He has loved you with an everlasting love. And so as we go back into this bridge, I want to encourage you just to receive that, that our hearts are in his sight. And there's something personal that he wants to give to you today. So let's just declare that again.
on, let's lift up our hands all over the room right now. The presence of the Lord is here. Father God, we honor you, God, for your presence. We thank you, Father God, for your glory. Come on, let's continue to worship. Father, we're running after you, God. We're running after your presence, oh God. We're running after who you are. Come on. Father, we honor you, Lord, this morning. Let your presence, God, begin to invade this room. Let your presence, God, begin to invade every heart. Let your presence alone begin to invade. Come on, everyone, together. We're ready. Cyrus, you alone. One more 
to get so used to knowing the power of the name of Jesus if you need a miracle in your body right now is the moment if you need deliverance in your mind right now is the moment I'm looking for a remnant of people that know the power of the name of Jesus that when you declare the name of Jesus demons tremble cancer has to go tumors have to dry up when you declare the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, it's a name above cancer, it's a name above depression, it's a name above anxiety, it's a name above fear, it's a name above torment, it's a name above demonic oppression, it's a name above, it's a name above, it's a name above, it's a name above, it's a name above murder, it's a name above suicide, the blood of Jesus is the name, come on, declare. above every name we glorify you king of kings come on we glorify you lord of lords because we know that there's no other king like you jesus and this morning lord as we come to lift up the name i just begin to see as we were singing the reason why i kept pushing it is because i'm seeing every other altar that has been built over the city of uvalde coming down turn my mic up i'm seeing every other altar in the city of uvalde every altar of witchcraft every altar of santeria every other idol that has been built over the city of uvalde what are we doing right now we are declaring jesus as the highest authority over this city jesus is the highest authority in the city of uvalde and when we worship the king just like this when you can get a community just like this to be clear, begin to declare the name of jesus demons begin to tremble all hell begins to break loose because we're finding a remnant of people that can declare Jesus. Everyone in the room, declare Jesus. Come on, declare it, Jesus. He reigns now and forever. Put your hands together this morning. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, my name is Pastor Humberto. I'm the lead pastor of Revive Church. And this morning, we're so honored to have each and every one of you in the room. It's an honor to see some new faces in the room. If you're here for the first time, just wave your hand at me. I just want to say hello to you. I see you. I see you guys. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. Wow, what a big group back here as well. So many new people in the room. Listen, this is what I need from you. I want you to take about 30 seconds. Get out of your chair. Go around the room. High five three people. Just tell them, welcome to the best place to be on a Sunday morning. Just like that. Come on. Get out of your chair. Go and shake someone's hand. Tell them, welcome to the best place to be on a Sunday morning. And then we're going to turn our attention to the screen.
Welcome to Revive Church. Our vision is to lead people to encounter God, His presence, and His power every day. If this is your first time joining us, we're so excited you're here. Text the word NEW to 210-209-8092 so we can get to know you. Or visit our connections table immediately after service and one of our serve team members will assist you. If you want to be part of the Revive community, Inside Revive is your next step. You can become a member of Revive Church from virtually anywhere. If you're interested in learning more about the vision, culture, and community of our church, simply download our mobile app or text GROW to the number on the screen and take Inside Revive today. Whether in San Antonio or Uvalde, you can now be part of our midweek Bible study. We are committing this year to intentional discipleship. Join us live on our YouTube channel at 7 p.m. every Wednesday. For those in San Antonio, text HOUSE to the number on the screen to find a house near you. For our online community, text NOTES to receive the Bible study available for download. MEN, the intense men's retreat is back this March 14th through March 16th. This year at Intense Men, you will explore the power of reversing curses. Focusing on the words in Malachi 4.6, which talk about repairing broken relationships between fathers and sons and healing generational wounds. Text INTENSE to the number on the screen to sign up now. Parents, are you ready to dedicate your child to the Lord? We would love to partner with you to take that step. Child dedications will take place Sunday, March 17th. To register, text CHILD to 210-209-8092. We are excited about our Easter Sunday celebration this year, and we have an amazing day planned for you, your friends, and family. Not only will we have some special activities for our revived kids, but together we will encounter God, His presence, and His power. You are invited! So join us at 11 a.m. at our Uvalde campus. Mark your calendars. Here is a list of some upcoming events. Here at Revive, we love to honor God by giving our first and our best through tithes and offerings. You can now give through our mobile app, text GIVE to our number, give online at our website, or for physical offerings, you can give by envelope and drop them off in our offering bucket. If you'd like to stay connected and stay updated with everything happening here at Revive, text CONNECT to our exclusive number and follow us on all social media platforms. Don't forget, you can also download our mobile app. Once again, welcome to Revive Church and thank you for joining us. Once again, welcome to Revive Church, the best place to be on a Sunday morning. Uh, I'm so honored to have you here and uh, be around family. The vision of Revive Church is to lead people to encounter God, his presence, and his power, not just on a Sunday, but every single day of your life. And the way that we do this to encounter the Lord is that you go through something called Inside Revive. Inside Revive is the way into membership, but it's actually not just membership. It's actually discipleship because what it does is that it teaches you how you best connect with the Lord. Uh, I realized very early on that the way I connect with God wasn't the way my wife connects with God. Uh, I'm, I like to get in my truck and travel and just hear the Lord uh, through movement. But then my wife likes to go into her closet and kind of go into a prayer room in solitude. And we realize that there's many different ways to connect with God. Now, although there is only one way, everyone say one way. There's only one way to God, and that is through Jesus Christ. There is many ways to connect with him. And so what we've discovered is that there's many ways to connect with the Lord. And, and when you go through membership, it actually becomes discipleship for you because it teaches you how you best connect with God. And if we can get everyone in this room connecting with the Lord, hearing God daily, what begins to happen is that we all hear God, and we're all obeying him, and God begins to speak to all of us, and then cool stuff begins to happen, like planting a church in Uvalde, Texas, right? And so we're here, you're here, and so uh, that's how that happens. And what you can do right now is you could text the word GROW, um, and we have an exclusive number. That number that's on the screen is a number that you can text at any time. But there's certain key words that you could text to receive information. And so if you'd like to take your next step into membership, just text the word GROW, save that number, put it on your phone, and then uh, you'll get a text back, and then it'll, t it'll take you through the process. We have a digital platform which allows us uh, to do all of this stuff online and uh but guess what we are going to open it up and we are going to begin to have an in-person inside revive class and all this is going to be taking place this month um, on the next tuesday of next of this month everyone say next tuesday 
All right, so let me, let me get my date right. Pastor Anna, sorry, I, I said next Tuesday, but what date did I give you? I just want to make sure that we get the right date because um, I can't remember the date off the top of my head right now. But we are going to be offering this class in person. And the reason why is because I feel like a lot of people grow better in community. We grow better here in person. And so we want to invite you the 19th, uh, March 19th. Everyone say March 19th. All right, it's going to be a Tuesday night, and what we're going to do is that we're going to offer this class in person. And so you can come in here, so save that date on your phone, 7 p.m., March 19th. You can come here, and we're going to take everyone through membership all at the same time. And I think that's going to be an awesome thing to do uh, on March 19th. It's going to be a Tuesday night, and you can join us right here in the sanctuary. It's going to be an awesome, awesome day. Well, listen, y'all, today it's a, it's a beautiful day. Uh, because we are continuing to grow. Everyone say revive is growing. And as revive grows, leadership begins to grow. And one of the most beautiful privileges that we have as pastors is to begin to grow a team. Uh, last year, the Lord gave us an assignment to begin to build ministers, pastors, and leaders of this house. And we had the privilege to anoint six different pastors. But today, we have the honor and the privilege to continue to grow. And we are anointing another two pastors of Revive Church this morning. Can I get some instrumental? Um, and so today, I want to call up all our, all our pastor staff that is here in the room, um, uh, Pastor John and Anna, Pastor Marcos and Evelyn, and then I'm going to call up mom and dad as well as apostolic elders of our house. Up here, guys, up here. Thank you all. And, uh, and this morning, uh, Steve, where are you at? Steve, can I get some instrumental, please? Um, <clears throat> or something. And so, y'all can stand right here. And so this morning, we have the honor and the privilege to have one of our, I think when I say their names, everyone's going to go crazy in the room because we love them so much. Uh, these people have served Revive Church for the last four years. Four years. Everyone say four years. four years. They've given their life to this house. They have done an incredible, incredible job in the last four years. They have served your children. And today we have the honor and the privilege to anoint Pastor Jesse and Pastor Lupe Garza. Come on. Come up here, guys. If y'all can stand right here in the middle for me, and everyone else can stand around them. This morning, uh, we have the honor. These incredible people right here are the ones that take care of your children. And, and Pastor Lupe now and Pastor Jesse who will now be anointed for this season. Um, this is a very beautiful moment for us as Revive Church because for the last four years, they've been directors, they've led, they've done an, they have an incredible team. Right now, they're sitting here because their team is taking care of your children right now, and they're doing such an incredible job. Come on. And now, they've done this for a long time. They were children's directors at, a, at another church for many years. And then they took a little small break, right, until they found Revive Church. And they found us in San Antonio, and they started just coming, and God did. I thought it was Mr. Miyagi, but no, it wasn't. It was, it was, it was Jesse Garza. And I remember the first time I met this man, I was like, who is this guy? And why does he look at me like this? You know, I thought he was mad. But this man has been one of the most sensitive men in our team, in our house. Uh, he's so sensitive to Holy Spirit alongside his wife and his beautiful family that I saw here. Welcome, guys. I saw you. And I want us to stand up for just a moment as we pray over them. But as I begin to pray for you guys this week, I just want you to put your hands out, Jesse. And Lupe, just put your hands out. Jesse, as I begin to pray for you this week, I really felt like the Lord was affirming you as a husband, as a man, and as a father. These are three gifts that the Lord has given to us as men, to be men of God, to be fathers, and to be husbands. And I know that we, as men, are not always perfect. As husbands, we're not always perfect. And as fathers, we're definitely not perfect. But the responsibility that you had to raise up a God-fearing family, you did that with everything that you had. But now the Lord says, I'm giving you the next generation and I'm putting them in your hands. 
And even though you don't have a natural grandchild, the Lord says, I'm giving you a generation to father. I'm giving you a next generation to father. And I just begin to see the Lord beginning to hand you tools and resources. And you say, Lord, but I don't have enough. The, I saw the Lord beginning to deposit new resources and tools and equipment. And the Lord says, I didn't just make you a, craftsman, a craftsman in the natural because you're a natural builder. You can take whatever missing pieces, broken pieces, and make a masterpiece. And the Lord says, I'm putting you here in the city of Uvalde to get the broken pieces of families and the broken pieces of children and the broken pieces. And you're going to begin to make masterpieces. You're going to begin to make masterpieces of families and children and a community and through your hands and through your voice and through your fathering you're going to help father the next generation they're going to look at you as grandpa jesse even though you're pastor jesse but your voice is going to begin to be so weighty weighty in glory you've led so many children to encounter the lord in those rooms back here but now many more will begin to know him because of your voice Lupe, the Lord made you a mother from the beginning. You've always been a fighter. You're not always right, but you know when you're wrong. And you've been able to, through the last four years, show us how committed you are to the next generation. The Lord has made you as a mother to father and to mother the next generation. But the Lord says, I'm going to begin to add strength to you in areas that you've been asking me to add strength to. I'm going to give you the team that you've desired. I'm going to put the right people in your hands and in your path. But this is what you're going to begin to do. You're not just going to begin to delegate. You're going to begin to empower other women, other leaders, other men and women to be able to steward the next generation. And I begin to feel from the Lord that God is going to download wisdom over you, intelligence over you, strategy over you. Because we need a city like Uvalde to begin to heal. But it heals by healing these little ones. The Lord says, as I've built trust with you, the little ones are going to begin to build trust with him. You knew the God of your youth. The Lord says, I am the God of your youth. And as I encountered you, even at a young age, I will begin to encounter these little ones at a young age. Don't ever diminish your encounters with me, says the Lord. Don't ever become familiar with the God we think we know. And yet the Lord says, I'm going to give you the same tools and resources, strategies, and love to begin to steward the next generation. And Father, today we bless them. We bless them. You good? You got something? Absolutely, I have something to say. <laughs> the Lord is going to begin to show you the importance of his children. Because in Jeremiah chapter 1, I read and the Lord highlighted this to me for you. And the scripture says, before I knew you, when I, I knew you, before I formed you. That's way before anything starts in the womb. I knew you before I formed you. And Jesus said, suffer the children to come to me. And this is going to be your calling. This is going to be your anointing today. That you're going to suffer the children to come to Jesus. And as you encounter him and the spirit of God encounters you, the children will begin to encounter him and they will begin to prophesy. They will begin to, to lead their parents to the Lord. They will be, be, begin to lead their friends to the Lord. So as the spirit of God comes on you and drips on you like oil and honey, it's going to begin to spread and to the children you touch and minister to. And surely you're not only going to be known as teachers, but you're going to be known as parents in reparenting a generation. So, Father, we thank you for them, Lord God. And we bless them, we bless them Lord God, as they did in Antioch in Acts 13. And we anoint them and separate them for the work of the ministry. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it right now. Pastor Marcos, you got something? Pastor Leslie, go ahead. Hallelujah. Um, 
I love you guys so much. And there's many people and many children that love you deeply. And so as I was praying for you guys this week, I heard the Lord say that he has preserved you too for such a time as this. He has preserved you too for such a time as this. Preservation means over a period of time, something is keeping and maintaining its state. And I felt like the Lord was saying, I've maintained the state of their heart for many years for such a time as this. That in the same way Esther was handpicked and chosen from the many, he handpicked and chose you both from many to arise in strength and in fire for this hour. Yes. Your service and your honor to him isn't one that's insignificant. Children's ministry is not for the faint of heart. And he knew that you would be able to stand tall and strong for many years as a sign to the rising generations and the passing generations. That in the spirit of Elijah, you guys would prepare a way for him. That you would prepare a way for him to encounter his children. That without fear, y'all would proclaim his kingdom to the rising generations. And the Lord has entrusted you with his greatest treasure, which are his children. He has entrusted you because your hearts have remained set on him. And he's entrusted you because I heard him say, there is no double-mindedness in them. He said, there's not an ounce of double-mindedness in them because he's tested you. He's tested to see. And you know he's tested you in the areas that have hurt the most. Only you know the areas that he's tested y'all in. But he has found pleasure in you, both of you. He has found pleasure in you. And he won't forget the words he has spoken over you. And he will remain faithful. And you will see his faithfulness. You will see his faithfulness. And so now I prophesy, because this is what I saw as I was praying for you. I prophesied Jeremiah 118. Again, from the chapter 1 of Jeremiah. I think the whole chapter is for you guys. For see today, I have made you strong, yes. like a fortified city that cannot be captured. Like an iron pillar or a bronze wall, you will stand against the whole land, the kings, officials, priests, and people of Judah. I could see you like a bronze wall, standing tall, strong, and firm for a generation that will not be overcome. And as he says, to stand against the whole land, that means you're in a place where people can see you because it's a place of honor. And the word says that the greatest place of honor, the greatest in the kingdom is those that serve. And it's those that serve his little ones. Because Luke 9 says, anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me also welcomes my father who sent me. Whoever is the least among you is the greatest. We praise God. We praise him because y'all have shown to be great for serving our little ones. Um, as I'm praying for you guys this week, uh, the Lord took me to Psalms 126. And I was reading Psalm 26, and, and it really stopped me at verse 5 and 6. It says, those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing the shield with him. And what the Lord was telling me is, all you tears that you guys been sharing all this, all this time is preparing the seeds of those little ones. It's softening the ground 
So when the seed goes, the ground will be ready. The ground will be ready. So the Lord said, don't stop crying. Don't stop crying because every tear I've been holding it in my hand. And I've been spreading it out to the waters, putting them in the hearts of each and every one of those kids that come in. And there are more to come. So you need to keep crying. So you need to keep sharing tears. Because those tears will, be, will be bring great fruit. Will be great fruit when you see the, the result of what is, God is doing in your life. And the result of those tears in the life of those children. You will be able to say it was all worth it. It was all worth it. So Father, we thank you in this moment for every tear that they had gave to this ministry. So we bless them, Lord, and we declare that the fruit will be greater and they will come back with joy in their hearts, claiming that yours is the glory, that yours is the kingdom, and everything that they had done is for your name to be exalted. Amen. Come on, just stretch your hands out over here one more time. Thank you, Father. Y'all can hold hands for me. Let's surround them, pastors. And just stretch your hands this way. Today, as an apostle of this house, as an overseer of this house, we ordain and commission you for such a time as this. You are anointed, Father, for the working of ministry. We declare that you are ordained and commissioned for the working of God's ministry. We will expand and the oil will begin to flow from the head all the way down the beard, all the way down the garments to the feet. Father God, we honor you, God. And we, today, Lord, we celebrate this moment as we commission them to your kingdom and to the advancement of the kingdom of God. Father, we honor you. May they glorify you. May they steward this season well in Jesus' mighty name. And let all the house begin to celebrate our new children's pastors. Come on. New children's pastors. And so today it's our honor. We can stand here together. It's our honor to present Pastor Jesse, your ordination of pastoral ministry, and Pastor Lupe as your pastoral ministry. We're going to look right here. Where's our camera people at? Get in the center for me. Thank you guys so very much. Thank you all so very much for this moment of celebration. How many of you are excited to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. It's an honor for us to, to be an apostolic house. What that, what that means is that we're a house of the fivefold ministry according to Ephesians chapter 4. And today I just want to honor a few people uh, that we do have in a house from San Antonio. Apostle Jack Johnson from uh, True Love of Jesus Ministries. Great to have you here. And all the way from New Jersey, Prophet Ugo, I don't know how to say your last name, man, Eseji, or some, Eseji. <laughs> good to have you with us, man, today. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, Y'all may have a seat today. Uh, today, I have the privilege of having one of our pastors, and for the next three weeks, we're going to have some of our pastor voices begin to minister to us. Today's going to be a beautiful morning because we have one of the best pastors of Revive Church. Uh, he's loved by many. He, he uh, is enjoyed by so many. And he has a, a very beautiful prophetic gift. When we prophesy, what we are saying is we are hearing the voice of God in your favor. And so today, I want you to open up your heart. I want you to open up your mind. Because today, we're going to expand territory through the prophetic. And so this morning is going to be a beautiful morning. And I want us just together, uh, I promise it'll be the last time I have you stand up. But let's just honor the man of God, Pastor John Martinez. Come up here, Pastor John. <laughs> Let's minister, man. Whew. Glory to God. 
How do I sound? Do I sound like Jesus? Have you heard the voice of Jesus today? Oh man, this thing's all oily. It smells good. As long as it smells good. Praise God. I had to dress down a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, when I minister, I like to feel comfortable. Um, <laughs> can I share? I can share the story. You guys can have a seat. <laughs> I just want you to know that, you know, people call me a prophet and that kind of thing. You know, I praise God for that. You know what I mean? They acknowledge the gift. I acknowledge the gift. I in no wise turn it away or push it away. But I'm a normal person, just like you. Even though the finger of God, the anointing of God is upon my life, you know, like just like getting ready this morning. I, I had, I was, we were ready to go. Had my shirt, pastor, I had my pants, you know, ready to go. My wife looked at me, he's like, no, that's not going to work. She said, change your pants. So I went in the closet, went in there and changed my pants, khaki pants. She's like, yeah, that looks good. Then I went back out, got her, I was ready to go. She looked at my shirt, she's like, no, you need to change that shirt. I'm like, praise God, you know, I'm a prophet, you know what I mean? I'm anointed. So I went in there, and she went in there, and she picked out a shirt. She picked out a shirt for me. She started ironing, and she's here, put this on. So I put it on, ready to go, right? I put my jacket on. I was like, yeah, you need to put your uh, Converse. Put your, where are your Converse? Because you're comfortable in there. I was okay, yes, ma'am, you know. At that point, you know, I knew who was called, who was a prophet, and who was anointed of God. <laughs> so I submitted. I submitted my gift under that. Praise God. You know, God, God's so good, and he loves us. He loves us. You need to know the revelation of God's love and how much he loves us. And how many know we are taking ground, not only in our life, but in Uvalde, in San Antonio, and wherever God's going to send us. Amen? But you can't take ground unless you take ground in yourself. It doesn't start here in, this, in a church building. It starts right here in your heart at home. That's why we push encountering God, encountering God. We keep pushing, encountering God. We're God pushers. <laughs> you know, a lot of us used to be drug pushers. <laughs> but now we're God pushers. We want you to get in the presence of God because I know what it's done in my life and I know what it can do in your life. I'm talking about experience and experiential knowledge with God. I'm not trying to push a, a religion. I'm not trying to push a church. I'm trying to push his presence. Amen. It seems like this side's more anointed. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach over here. Let's pray. I want you to close your eyes. Let's just pray. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for the Holy Spirit already being here. Thank you, Father God, for special abilities being released today. Father, without the special abilities, we can do nothing. And we are nothing without you. So, Father, I thank you for the anointing of God and your special abilities being released in our lives today. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you for it, Lord God. For the Holy Spirit sent to help our weaknesses and that which we are not able to produce. Father God, I thank you. He is in us to produce the kingdom of God in our presence today. So, Father, I thank you for it right now in advance, Lord God. I thank you for the work of the ministry, Father God, being done today. By the prophetic word, Father God. As we speak your word and declare your word, not only over the land, Father God, but over your people, Father, whom you loved and given your life for. So, Father, we thank you for it right now in advance. We thank you for it right now in advance. Just raise your hands. Just raise your hands. They say, Father God, I thank you. I thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. Father, I thank you, Father God. Father, I believe that I receive today in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody says amen. amen. You know what amen means, right? What does it mean? So be it. So be it. Let it be done. Let it be done. So let it be written. Hallelujah. 
I got my family watching me today, so if I look a little more nervous than usual, then that's why. I got uh, four sisters, one brother, and uh, I think most of them are watching. My nieces, I got like 15,000 nieces, and they're from one, they're from one sister. Right, Veronica? <laughs> They'll get that joke anyway. But every morning, every morning we text each other. Every morning. Every morning. And that's not a joke. We say good morning. Have a great day. We send blessings. Sometimes we send an encouraging word. If there's, there's prayers or something need, needed in their families or somebody that they know, we put it on there. We intercede. We begin to pray. Whenever I minister, I always, we always send texts. Hey, I'm ministering here. Hey, can, you, can you pray? Not only pray for today, but pray for every Sunday. And it's such a blessing. But you know what? It's not always been like that. But seeing where God has brought us from to where we are today, that's why I can tell you, God can change your life. If you just get in his presence, he will not only change you, but he will change your family. Praise God. Here goes that anointing side again. <laughs> I want to show you a little bit of difference before the Holy Spirit is just going to, he's just going to begin to minister to people. But I want to show you the difference between the Old Testament prophet and New Testament prophet. I want you to go to Jeremiah chapter 1. We already, we already touched on it a little bit while we were ministering. I want you to go down to the fifth verse. I'm going to read. I'm just going to straight read it. And then I'll go back and I'll highlight some points. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. He says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. In other words, God's saying, I'm going to squeeze you into shape in the womb. How many, how many parents, how many moms know what that means? You know, squeezing and in the shape in the womb, and the guy, a kid is being formed <laughs> inside of the cave. <laughs> Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Listen to God's words. And verse 6, O oh, sovereign Lord, I said, Jeremiah said, I can't speak for you. I am too young. How many of us have made excuses? When God has told you, hey, I've called you to your family. I've called you to save your family. I've called you to heal the sick. I've called you to do miracles. I've called you to do this. I called you to do that. Oh, but, but, but I don't know. I, I, I can't do it. Look at my, I, my, I got a toe jam. <laughs> you come up with all these excuses. But listen to what God says. The Lord replied, he said, don't say. Say, everybody says, don't say. Don't say. Everybody say it again. Say. He said, don't say it. He said, don't say, I'm too young. What did he tell Adam in the garden? Who told you you were naked? Because I didn't tell you that. That information did not come from me. It came from another source out of sight, your creator. Why would I listen to somebody that has nothing to do with my creation and who I am? <laughs> Why would I listen to the devil? He had no sense to stay in heaven. And he was there. <laughs> and he was in God's presence. And he had no sense to stay there. But some of you are listening to him. Oh, I'm sorry. Some of you are starting to sweat. I'm sorry. I'm starting to sweat too. <laughs> he said, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people for I will be with you. Some of you care about your reputation more than God's reputation. Wow. 
You're always looking at somebody else and seeing what they think. What do you think God thinks? Let's value his opinion. Right? Let's have a revival of the Bible. <laughs> and let's find out what the word of God says about me. That's how I survived growing up where I grew up and where I'm from. Because when I first got saved, I was so hungry for God's word. I would go to the word and I would find out who I am. I would go to the book of Ephesians. <laughs> and say, Father God, I thank you that my eyes are enlightened by your spirit. Why? Because he said it. I didn't have to make up anything. I didn't have to make up any religion to make myself feel good. You know, religion is, is creating something and presenting it to God and hoping that he accepts it. That's religion. Relationship is going to God and finding out his opinion and saying, okay, I'm going to do that. This is how it's acceptable. We must value, I'm telling you, we must value if we're going to be taking ground, we must value God's opinion. I'm sorry, I'm not upset or anything like that. You guys still love me? Okay. I don't have a glass shield in front of me. I can't duck, so I don't throw no rocks. Wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you, and don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you. That's so soothing. That's so soothing. When God says, I'm going to be with you, wherever you go, and he says, I'm going to be with you, what else matters? Who cares? Who cares? You know, what, you know what the cry of the last day church is going to be? I overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony. But they did not love their life even unto death. That's the cry. That's going to be the cry of the last day church. Because they're going to be obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and they're going to do what they're called to do. And they're not going to care about other people's rep reputation or their opinion other than God's. Don't think it's a mistake that God sends the dign dignitaries of, the, of this city to this church. Because God wants to speak to them. And we need to be the voice of his church in the earth. Because it's so needed. Because culture is crying out so loud that churches are beginning to cower. And they want to go back into the little hole and leave me alone, us four and no more. <laughs> but God is like, nope. You know what's going to happen? Persecution is going to happen. And he's going to push the church out. Say, I'm not afraid. Say it again. And say, I'm not afraid. And say, God is with me. God's going to go with me. But you need to conquer your home. You need to conquer your heart. You need to allow the Lord to, to, to minister to you so you can take ground in your heart. If you have unforgiveness or bitterness against somebody, you need to deal with it. If you, have, you need to repent about something, you just need to deal with it. Just deal with it. <laughs> just go to him. Amen? Listen, we need some criers today. <laughs> That's going to cry out to Jesus. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And who cares who's around? You know, the disciples told blind Bartimaeus, they pushed him aside, they pushed him down. They said, hey, don't go over there. Don't bother him. He's busy in his parade. <laughs> He's like, he didn't care. You know what? I need something. <laughs> My life needs to be changed. Look at me. I'm blind. I can't see. Some of you can see and you can't even, you can't even live. But if we cry out to Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. What do you mean? 
You know what? We need some crazy friends that's going to take us to Jesus and put a hole in the roof and drop us down and say, hey, here's, your, here's what you need. Let's go to church. I'm going to drop you down in the ceiling because there's so many people in there. But you need, to, you need God's anointing. You need his touch. Here. <laughs> I want somebody to start putting a hole in our ceilings. Hey, oh, wait. It costs a lot of money. <laughs> Just bring them through the door, right? And we'll pray for them. It's okay. We got a lot of doors. How about the woman with the issue of blood? You're here because you want something from God. You're here because you want something from God. When you leave your reputation and you don't care what people think, you're going to get something from God. I'm telling you right now. Because if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, what does the scripture say? They're going to be filled. They're going to be filled. Yes, we're here for another feeling. Amen. I'm here for another feeling. Not because I'm preaching. <laughs> this is the way that I am all the time. Not that I walk around the house, you know, preaching and yelling at everybody. Hey, Jesus. You know. <laughs> but I watched the barometer of my wife's respect. Did you hear me? You married couples? I watched the barometer of my wife's respect. Why is that? Because I value her opinion about me. Because we live together. If I'm not walking up right, she's not going to be happy. And she probably won't dress me right. <laughs> She'll let me go out in public. Hey, you know, I just, oh, you look great. Yeah, huh? It's not a marriage seminar I'm talking to. We're taking ground, right? We're taking ground. Come on. <laughs> I try to hit, I try to hit all the nails, Pastor. You know, all the ones you lay down, I'm trying to hit them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying to hit them. Let's go. Verse 9. And the Lord reached out. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go back to 8. Sorry. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and I will protect you. For I, the Lord, have spoken. Verse 9. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth. Say, he touched my mouth. Say, he touched my mouth. Some of y'all need some mouth touching today. You praise God. Hallelujah. You know, when you got cut off in the traffic, you, you need your mouth touched today. <laughs> you, need a, you need a piece of hot coal. Praise God. Oh, man. He touched my mouth and said, look. I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some of you must uproot, some you must uproot and tear down, destroy, and overthrow. That sounds like gangster sound. That sounds like a gangster talking there, you know what I mean? We're gonna throw down. Veronica, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> destroy and overthrow others you must build up and plant. Verse 11. Then the Lord said to me, Look, Jeremiah. What do you see? And I replied, I see a branch from the almond tree. And the Lord said, that's right. And it means that I'm watching. And I will certainly carry out my word. You know why he asked him to watch, go look at the, the almond tree? And he saw the almond tree. You know, the almond tree in Hebrew means the same thing as watching. So God is always watching. When they had the ark and they put the commandments inside the ark, they put Aaron's rod inside of there, along with other rods. But people were murmuring and complaining. He said, the one that buds, and it was an almond, because God's watching. He's listening to murmuring and complaining. He said, the one that buds, he said, that's the one I'm anointing for the work of the ministry the priesthood hallelujah hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's so good. God's so good. I said God's so good. God is so good. God is so good. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. <laughs> now it's time to me for me to get a little weird, okay? How many are, are familiar with the prophetic gift? Just raise your hand. You're familiar with it. You've seen it before in operation. Because of time, I'm just going to explain it really quick. It says, I believe in 1 Corinthians 14, it says that the, the gift of prophecy is for edification, comfort, and exhortation. It's to build up the body. And in Ephesians 4, it talks about the gifts that Jesus has laid. Prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, you know the rest. Apostolic. These are gifts so God can bless you and help you do the work in the ministry. The difference between the Old Testament prophet, God has chosen the prophets and raised them up to speak to his people. Like he did, in Jer he did Jeremiah, he has anoint his anointing on Jeremiah's life because he sent him and raised him up to warn the people of Israel. Hey, judgment is coming. It's too late. You guys are done. And then it goes into Daniel, and that's when Nebuchadnezzar besieged Jerusalem and took, them all, took, took all the people out, all the good people, actually. But then you get into the New Testament. You have the prophets in the Old Testament. God has selected and picked them out. But God, look it, God wants all you to prophesy. That's why he's given gifts among men, so all of you can prophesy. We have the office of the prophet. But you have the gift of the Holy Spirit so you can prophesy. You can declare his word. Your words are very important. In Mark 11, Jesus said, you can speak to this mountain and tell it to be removed. And it shall be removed and it shall obey everything that you, what? Say. <laughs> say what have you been saying over your life what have you been saying over your family what have you been saying concerning your job what have you been saying concerning church what have you been saying over your children what have you been saying you need to get the word inside your heart you need to get the word inside your mouth and begin to declare some things over your life and to begin to declare God's goodness over your family and begin to bless them amen The work, of the, pro the, the work of the prophet in the New Testament, God has called so he can build you up for the work of the ministry. God wants to edify you. He wants to edify you. How many use Legos? Any kids in here? I know they use Legos. How many adults like Legos? Come on, there should be a lot of them. That's edification. You're building something up, a block at a time. When you come to church, you hear a word, you're building, being built up a block at a time. You become a Lego person. Say, I'm a Lego person. <laughs> it's close to logos, which is the word, right? My couple back here keeps highlighting you in the, you have a goatee. Yes, you, and is that your wife? I'm sorry, I don't want to assume anything. <laughs> Please, can you stand up? Can I minister to you? I'm going to do it anyway, so it doesn't matter if you say yes or no. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, the work of the prophet is just, it's by unction. You feel a bubbling up, it comes up. It's an anointing, it's an anointed fountain. Say it's an anointed fountain. It bubbles up. <laughs> Say it bubbles up. it bubbles up. When God highlights certain people in my life, this is, this is different for me. I know Pastor, uh, Pastor Bert, I mean, he prophesies just by walking. He'll prophesy, he'll go to McDonald's, he'll be God, prophesy over Big Mac. Or, he just prophesies. He just prophes prophesies over everything. 
he, he just walks it. <laughs> I submit the gifts under him. He's my pastor. And that's why I have authority. Because of my submission. You have to learn that. You have to learn. I just not, don't fly off the handle. Hey, I'm a prophet. Look at me. It don't work that way. God is working in your families. God is beginning to, to, to minister to your family and your children, your home. There's been a cry in your heart concerning your children and your family. It just seems like some things are just not steered right, and it affects you. And the Lord said he's going to begin to deal with your children. He's going to begin to send labors across their path. And he's going to begin to minister to them and speak to them. It's going to be so harsh that they're not going to be able to sleep. They might even call you and say, hey, dad, mom, I can't sleep. And you're going to know what that is because the spirit of God is going to be stirring the pot, so to speak. He's going to anoint them. He's going to bless them. And they're going to come back. Don't get weary in well-doing. Because in due season, which is very soon, you're going to reap if you do not faint. Amen. You receive that? You receive that? Praise God. You can have a seat. I hope you have children because that, it's not going to work. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I guess we'll find out after church, right? Hey, I don't have any kids. <laughs> You know, I, I pray for accuracy, man. I pray for, I pray for authenticity, man. I want to be authentic, amen? I want to be the real deal. <laughs> That's why you got to keep your heart right. Hallelujah. Hey, Raj. Yes, you, Raj. I know we have a couple of Rogers. We got Raj Minaj, and then we have regular Roger on the... He's our web guy. That's right, man. You can stay back there. You want everybody to look at you? They can look at you. Everybody look at Raj. Look, see? There he goes. He's right there. <laughs> Woo, zero. Give it up for Raj. He's a good guy. Raj, you're a good guy. God has, God has seen your heart. You know, he has prepared the place for you. I see a path that's been prepared for you already. Sometimes it does, it does get wearisome, and you kind of got concerned concerning your future. But God says, I have your future already planned out. Just continue to stay on the path that you're on. Even though you walk to the left and the right of that path, the path is still there. All you got to do is get back in the path and drop in the path. You know how a path has a little indentation. That's the path. You continue to walk in that path and continue to move forward. Because God has said he, he has plans for you and they're going to prosper. And the scripture says that the word of God has gone before you and he has blessed I don't know if I'll tell you this in private. I'll, I'll tell you this in private, but yeah, God has just <laughs> God has just blessed your future, man. Okay, don't get tired. Don't get tired on me, man. <laughs> don't do it. My brother, stand up. Is that your son? Huh? Spiritual son. Come on, spiritual son, stand up too. Praise God. God's realigning your life. A zeal, you have a zeal for God. You have a zeal for his word, but it's got to be according to knowledge. God is saving you right now. He has thrown out the life preserver and pulling you in to protect you because he loves you. He cares about you and he cares about your family more than the ministry that he's given you. Let the sheep bleed a little bit. You're not going to be, you're not going to be anything like you are right now. Because God, Pastor, lay hands on him. Put your hands on him. God is restoring you. God is bringing restoration to you. God is having reflection in your heart and in your mind. He wants you to see what he sees. Past ministry. 
He wants to see you. He's calling you to the secret place. And in the secret place, he will reveal the plan step by step in what you're supposed to do. And the plan will not drain you and take away the life that he has given you. For Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I laid down my life so you don't have to lay down your life. There's coming out of you a ministry for family. It's being birthed right now. You have a passion for family. But for God's sake, your family is not going to be on the altar. The lamb has been slain already on the altar for your family. Right now, God speaks peace, restoration over your life. And being refreshed by his spirit right now in Jesus' name. You will not be be steered by the hustle and the bustle of culture around you. But you you will be steered by my spirit, says the spirit of God. Have I not say my burden is light and my yoke is easy. He does not put the yoke of steel around his servants. And the people that he calls friends. And yeah, God is going to raise up men around you that's going to help you. But you have to allow them to help you. You have to allow them to help you. Your word for the rest of this year is going to be empowerment. You're going to empower those that are around you. In the name of Jesus... Father, we empower this man, Father God. Father God, with the power and the anointing to empower and anoint those that are around him, that are called, that will help him. Father God, that will serve him, Father God. That will be, Father God, that, that, that uh, uh, bearer of armor, Father God, that he needs, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray that the love of God will burst will burst in his heart and in his life for his wife and for his family and for his home in the name of Jesus. Father, because without your love, Father God, it's all noise anyway. Young man, don't be reluctant concerning the word of God. Dive into his word And don't run from God's discipline in your heart and in your life. It's going to feel very uncomfortable at times. But the glory of God will rest upon you when you pass through the discipline. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's coming on you. So don't don't run. I, I see God's hand on you. You're kind of jerking a little bit. They say, what have I got myself into? You know what? It's the finger of God on you. He's called you. There's nothing you can do about it to run. I'm telling you, I tried. You can't do it. You can't. It's very miserable. But God knows what you know. And he knows what you love. Even if you don't know it. When you end up there, you're going to be like, I am so glad I made the choice. I am so glad I made the choice. You guys received that? Praise God. Praise God. Oh, my gosh. Baby, let me see that towel. Where's the towel? I'm just. Thanks, Pastor. Sweating, man. I can throw this at somebody and it can be healed, right? <laughs> now, praise God. God has been so good. Jordan, stand up, man. Everybody say hi, Jordan. <laughs> you keep telling me, say, hey, where's my word? Where's my word? Here he goes. 
Here it goes. I told you I had it. It was brewing right here in my heart. It's been brewing in my heart. <laughs> the Lord is going to begin to deal with some fears inside you. Because God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. There's some areas in your life that you're afraid to step out in. And God is saying step out like Peter stepped out in the water because he's there to catch you. He says, don't be afraid of the waves. Don't be afraid of the emotions. Don't be afraid of all the other stuff. But God has said, just step out and I will be with you. But the way you deal with fears is not remaining where you are, but begin to take steps forward. And then the fear begins, begins to fall off. But you have to take the steps. If not, the fear will remain and just grow. But kill the fear in childhood, not when it grows up to be the giant <laughs> that you don't want to see. But the Lord's beginning to change you. He's beginning to give you in a different, different direction in your life. Today, today, things are going to begin to change, not only inside of you, but inside you, in your life and, the, and, and, and around you. And there's a fear that God is going to deal with also concerning you speaking the truth. God is saying he's anointing your mouth right now to speak truth. To speak truth. To speak truth in love. So, Father, I thank you for Jordan's life, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for that also, which I see that the Lord is going to bless you with, man. He's going to bless you with, but he's going to deal with your heart first. Once you come out of this, God is going to begin to open some doors for you. You're going to begin to see the difference not only in your life, but those that are around you. In Jesus' name. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where's Amber? Amber, Johnny, you guys stand up. I was praying for you guys yesterday. Just, you guys, I just started thinking about you. And I just started praying for you. You guys are easy to prophesy over, so that's why I called you. I need a little break. Somebody I know. <laughs> I got, you know, I'll go through uh, your, your Instagram or something like that and be like, oh, yeah, that's what, yeah, okay. I can prophesy over them. No, I'm joking. I don't, I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even on Facebook. I don't even know how to use it. This is my book. I've got my face in this book. <laughs> Hallelujah. Concerning family, the anointing of God and the spirit of God is going to begin to come on you and stir the pot in your home and in your life concerning your family and your children. You will not lose your children, I'm telling you right now. God has your children in his hand. In the right hand of his righteousness, he is moving in your family and in your children's lives. The plans that you are making are going to begin to change. It's going to be more concise. It's going to be more direct. And God is going to begin to call you more closer into ministry. Into ministering to his people. Because you, Amber, have the word of God in your mouth and in your heart. The anointing of God to minister to his people are, is on you. You know what the bubbling up means. You know when the Holy Spirit speaks to you. You know that voice. And John, God is going to stretch you like a rubber band because he, he's going to just, you know how the piñata, you know, I'm, uh, I don't know if God's hitting you with the, like a piñata and all the gifts are just going to fall out of you. And all the people that are around you are just going to gather around and grab all the gifts from you. But you know what? Don't hold back. There's more to be had. So you don't have to hold back. Don't be afraid to release and let go. God cannot bless. If he can't get it through you, he can't get it to you. He's got to get it through you. But that's why he's going to bless your family first. Amen? Praise God. You guys can have a seat. Veronica. Leo, you guys stand up. You guys stand up. Come on. Put your hand up. Put your hand up. 
you know, your education is not over. God is going to open doors for you for education because there's so much inside of you. But life has tried to take it away from you. And you think it's over and it's been stolen, but it's not stolen. God is going to begin to open doors for you. And he said, don't worry about the finances because I'm going to open the doors for you. Whatever I open, he said, no man can shut it. It's going to be a time that God is going to begin to restore your own heart and your mental ability that he's given you in the beginning. But the enemy began to destroy that. But God is saying, I'm going to restore what the canker were have eaten away from your, both of your lives. Raise your hand, my brother. Both of them. I want you to open it up like this. God's going to begin to, 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 to strain that intelligence of yours. He's going to squeeze it like an orange. And all the juices are going to begin to flow out. There is more in you than you see in yourself. The Lord is going to begin to build you, your confidence up. Well, you're going to not going to be able, to, you're not going to be walking behind constantly. But God's going to bring you out in the front, in the forefront, because he's going to build your confidence. And once he builds your confidence, then you're going to begin to see life differently and what God has called you to do. But right now, God is going to stir your heart and stir the gifts of God that is in you. He's going to begin to bless you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he's going to begin to bless your home. Then he's going to begin to open up. He's going to begin to bless your home. Your home is going to drip with abundance. And it's not only going to be for you, but those around you. Because you have a desire and a heart to bless those that are around you. Right? Right? Praise God. You can have a seat. Praise God. Pastor, I just want, I just want to start lining people up. Those that want ministry, we're going to just start lining them up. Because I can go on, but I want you guys to get involved. Man of God, you guys need to prophesy. You guys ready? You ready? If not, just have a seat. I mean, I'm just, yeah, well, hey, is you going to stir up? Is that all right, Pastor? Hey, worship team, can you guys come up? Everybody say taking ground. Everybody say taking ground. Taking ground in my heart. Taking ground in my heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is how we're going to do it. If you want ministry, the prophetic ministry, we're going to have ministers come up here and we're going to begin to prophesy over you and release the word of, release the, word of the Lord because we're taking ground through prophecy. Amen? We're taking ground through the prophetic. We're taking ground. Come on. God's not called us here to play. My brother back there in a the white shirt, all the way in the back. You just look, yep, there's no more robes back there. <laughs> it's not the other guy in the white shirt. <laughs> Brother, stand up. Hallelujah. Is that your wife or girlfriend or friend? Friend? Okay, you, you can say, you don't have to, yeah, you don't have to say uh, yes if you don't want to. You guys can talk about that after, after a service. <laughs> My brother, raise your hands. I keep hearing God say, I'm calling this man deeper. I am calling you deeper to come forward even more. God does not determine your future according to your past. It's all according to his purposes in you. That's how powerful his purposes are, are, are in you. He's calling the purpose inside of you that he has placed in you. You're a very smart man. There's some things that you've lost. There's some money that you've lost. There's some things that you've lost. And God says, I can restore it. I can restore it. If you give it to me, I will show you and I will restore it. A hundredfold. I see you just... You know, the miry clay is, miry clay is like mud. You know, you get your boots stuck in there, you 
you pull your foot out and your boot stays there, that's miry clay. <laughs> and you're almost out of the miry clay. And you're going to begin to walk a little bit easier. But know that it's the Spirit of God that's in you and it's on you. And he's leading you and he's guiding you. And he's touching you right now and he's going to minister to you. And he's going to restore those things to you. And once he restores to you what the enemy has taken away from you, you're going to see what you're called to do with it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Brother, I'm telling you. Embrace it. Embrace God's word. Amen. You receive that? You receive that? <laughs> Praise God. All right, this is what we're going to do. Whoever wants ministry, the ministry of the word, please come on up in the front. We're going to begin to anoint. We're going to begin to take ground. What's that, Pastor? Everybody stand up. You guys can start lining up. Come up front. And give some room in the front so the ministers can come and walk in front of you. Praise God. Come on, guys, pick up. Hallelujah. I want you to position your heart to receive. As much as it is by faith for me to speak the word over your life and these men to speak the word over the life over your life, it's by faith that you're going to receive it also. Jesus said, by your faith, you will be made whole. By your faith, you will be made whole. <laughs> it's by his spirit. It's by his spiritual ability upon our lives. It's not us. Hallelujah. You guys can begin to minister. Praise God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit being present. Father God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit and his word being released in your people's lives, Father God, for edification, exhortation, and for comfort. Father God, we thank you for guidance, for direction, Lord God, for leading him and guiding him into truth, Father God, by your spirit, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, you speak an accurate, concise, precise word in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for it right now in advance in Jesus' name. You guys begin to lay hands on them and begin to speak the word of the Lord over their lives. If the Lord highlights somebody, go to them and begin to minister to them and speak the word of the Lord over them. For we exhort you, we comfort you, and be edified and built up in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for it right now, Lord God. We bless your name. If anybody else wants to come up, you're more than welcome to come up. This altar is open. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We bless your name for the Holy Spirit being present right now. Some of you are going to be healed. Some of you are going to be delivered. Some of the things you've been dealing with are going to be set free from. God's going to give you direction. God's going to speak to you a new light. You're not going to be walking in the darkness anymore because you're going to light, you're going to walk in the light of his word. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We bless your name. And like Timothy, you're going to war a good warfare concerning the prophecies spoken over you. So, Father, we take ground. We take ground. We take ground with the prophetic. We take ground prophesying over your people. We take ground, Lord, edifying them. Father, we take ground building them up. We take ground right now in Jesus' name. You take ground. You take ground in your life. You take ground in your heart. You take ground. Don't be afraid. Believe that you're 
receive. Glory be to Jesus.